assalamu alaikum my dear students i hope all of you are fine and doing well so topic here we are going to discuss it is the oxides of halogens basically the oxides mean all the elements or all the atoms in the periodic table when they are going to react with the oxygen then they form the products these products are basically called as the oxides so likewise the other elements here we have the halogens and these halogens are the group 7a elements they are also going to be react with the oxygen and in turn they form the products that are called as oxides of the halogens and here we have four types of the halogens the first one is fluorine the second is chlorine bromine and the iodine so here the fluorine can produce the two types of the oxides the first one is of2 and then the second one is o2f2 likewise the chlorine it can produces the four types of the oxides the first one is cl2o then clo2 then cl2o6 and cl2o7 which is the hapta oxide dichlorohapta oxide then bromine can produces three oxides br2o bro2 and bro3 likewise here we have the iodine that can produce the three oxides i2o4 that is tetroxide then pentoxide and then there is i4o9 let's have a look on their preparation that how we can form these oxides the first one we have the oxides of fluorine the fluorine can have two types of the oxide the first one is the tri oxygen difluoride tri oxygen means there will be three oxygen atoms and difluorine there may be two fluorine atoms so its formula is o3f2 when it is present in the liquid state then it can just be prepared when there is a mixture of fluorine and oxygen we have if we have the fluorine and oxygen its mixture and it just plays in an electric discharge and the temperature over there is required 363 degrees celsius and as a result of this reaction there is a dark viscous liquid formed with that turns to the reddish brown solid and when the temperature just reaches or cool down at 350 degrees celsius and on decomposition it gives the product like oxygen as well as the oxide of the fluorine this that is dioxide of the fluorine and here we have its formula like two fluorine atoms and two oxygen atoms are attached to it on the other hand when we have this tri oxygen difluorine it is going to be react with the fluorine then the product is formed which is dioxygen difluorine so this is the also reaction that can be happened in the presence of the electric discharge and it produces this oxide of the fluorine and here we have the structure of the other fluorine in which there is a bond angle almost 105 degree and here we have f2 o2 and this is of2 oxide of the fluorine after this we have the oxides of the chlorine basically the chlorine can exist in two oxygen form or the oxide form the first one is chlorine dioxide then we have chlorine heptoxide chlorine dioxide means it is having its formula as cl o2 dioxide mean two oxygen atoms are present and chlorine heptoxide means there are seven oxygen atoms are present as cl2 o7 this is the formula or formula or the structure formula for the chlorine dioxide and this is the formula for the chlorine heptoxide in which two chlorine atoms are present among which the three oxygen are present on the side and the one oxygen is working like a central oxygen that combines with it now let's have some its properties the first one is chlorine dioxide the chlorine dioxide is generally basically 
a pale yellow gas its second property is this it is soluble in water and then it is paramagnetic substance paramagnetic substance means the substance that is having some properties or attractive towards the magnet or that is magnetic in nature after this we have some preparation methods in which we have chlorine trioxide which is an anion on reacting with the chlorine anion and in the presence of the hydrogen ions it produces chlorine dioxide which is clo2 chlorine gas and the water molecule on the other hand the chlorine dioxide it can also be prepared by the action of the concentrated sulfuric acid on potassium chlorate perchlorate this reaction is violent that too much fast so to control the reaction here we just add the oxalic acid that it should be added so here we have this is oxalic acid that oxalic acid can also be written as c o h bond c o h this is the oxalic acid and here we have potassium perchlorate kclo3 on reacting with the sulfuric acid it produces potassium sulfate water carbon dioxide gas and at the end the required product which is the oxide of chlorine so this is the simple chlorine dioxide which is the oxide of the chlorine it can also be decomposed into the simple water as well as into the it's yellow 3 and it is used as an antiseptic antiseptic as well as it is used in the purification of water and it is also used to bleach the cellulose material it is used as a bleaching compound for the cellulose material of the chlorine dioxide we have the second oxide of the chlorine which is the chlorine heptoxide as Cl2O7 its formula is Cl2O7 it is an anhydride of perchloric acid we have HClO4 then after the removal of the water from it we gain the Clo, Cl2O7 that is chlorine heptoxide it can be obtained at minus 10 degrees celsius by dehydrating HClO4 with P2O5 phosphorus pentoxide this is perchloric acid HClO4 at minus 10 degrees celsius temperature we gain chlorine pentoxide heptoxide and phosphoric acid which is HPO3 so this was the simple overview about the oxides of the chlorine and fluorine I hope you guys understand and the next topic that we will discuss it is the oxides of bromine and iodine for that time you guys keep learning and have a good day